perfectly love us, and Lord, we magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and this is now in all the world. Cry out loud and have to the Messiah, bring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter to the Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we not, might not burden any of you. This was not because we did not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, your busy bodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The gospel hymn is number 11. The way to my soul. Heaven. 
But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You'll be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord God. of the old temple 
and the fact that the new temple was not as magnificent. Centuries later, the Romans conquered the area and set up a Roman collaborator, Herod, an Idumean, meaning that he was the descendant of Esau rather than Jacob, as the king of the Jews. This was not a popular move, as Herod was seen as a Roman stooge rather than a great king. In response, the Romans decided to subsidize a massive public works campaign to put people to work and assuage the eye of the people and build up acceptance of Herod. And the centerpiece of that public work campaign was to make the second temple a really eye-opening, eye-popping uh, doozy of a religious center. Jesus and many of his countrymen looked at the temple as a work of vanity, of cynical manipulation, and as a money-making religious scheme to, re to separate good people from their money, sort of like a first century Las Vegas resort with religious pretensions. So when the disciples began to ooh and awe about it, Jesus tells them that the political and religious underpinning of the temple was rotten, and it would just be a matter of time before it all collapsed. And if God was just, it would be sooner rather than later. Jesus is telling the disciples that it is past time to sing a new song. Jesus was a synagogue or a gathering together kind of person. And he and his cousin John had very little use for the whole temple prancing and dancing. I think in the eyes of Jesus, the Herodian temple is a metaphor for each of us. If we are like at the temple and exist only to feed our own on our own egos, wasting our energy of trying to impress people and become the center of our own existence, treating people as objects to be manipulated, then we lose the reason created, God created us to be part of a community of love and care. Let's put in mind how I grew up. I was a teenager. I wanted to be impressive. <laughs> I was an idol in my own temple and spent a lot of energy making sure that I'd be noticed and admired. The problem was I didn't spend as much energy developing my skills. My first professional acting job was in an outdoor drama. I was good in my acting. But when it was time for the crowd to sing together, I was the only member of a cast of 60, told just to mouth the words, <laughs> because I was drowning out some of the best singers on the East Coast. If you don't believe that, talk to your choir who just tried to sing that first song that we joined. <laughs> I so much wanted to, he to be heard that my ego was not interested in being part of the United Sound. I had not spent the time listening on how I might work with and help others. Later that summer, what the cast usually did was they put together their own show as well to be done in the afternoons. And I thought, oh wow, this is the time for me to really show off. And they, the show they picked to put on was Gilbert and Sullivan's Pirates of Penzance. And I couldn't sing any of those songs without, without disaster. I wish I could say that humiliation was part, was at the end of my ego being out of control, but it's a lifelong process. The struggle never really goes away. A decade and a half later, when I was a social worker and heavily involved with working with and helping others, I was also serving as a lay reader chalice bearer during a service in Boone, North Carolina, when the priest, Chuck Blank, of blessed memory, one of the most compassionate priests I've ever known, took me aside and asked that I not get between him and the organist, since I was drowning out the music in the ear in order to stay on pitch. <laughs> Eight years later, only by the grace of God and not by my own still lurking egotism, I was ordained in that church. 
Jose Marti, a 19th century Cuban revolutionary and poet who died fighting the Spanish before the Spanish-American War, wrote in Wandering Teachers, People need someone to stir their compassion often, to make their tears flow, and to give their souls the supreme benefit of generous feelings. For through the wonderful compensation of nature, they who give themselves of themselves grow, and they who withdraw into themselves, living in, for small pleasures and afraid to share their them with others, thinking only of the greedy satisfaction of their own appetites, will gradually change from a human with pure solitude from, from a human into pure solitude, carrying in their hearts all the gray hair of winter time. The reality for me in my old age is that I cannot stop the gray hairs from growing in my beard, but I can stop them from growing in my heart. The gray hairs of the heart begin when we start focusing on ourselves as the center of the universe. We need other people to work with and work for in order to sing a new song in our lives. Pippin McGee, an invisible priest, union analyst, teacher, poet, lecturer, and friend, reminds us of the truth. You alone can become yourself, but you cannot become yourself alone. You alone can become yourself, but you cannot become yourself alone. The poem that uh, I wrote before I that helped me this possible. Sing a new song. As the only member of cast of six, he asked not to sing because I was throwing off some of the better voices. Being told, paid as an actor, it was one of the wisest choices that I could use. And only that talent to the show bring. And as the only chalice bearer whose priest asked me not to get between him and organ melody notes because he couldn't hear them over my raucous croaks coming from my own contributions to a sanctus blast. Think about, think about following Christ. You're not here to perform for an audience, but to sing a new song with our life. During all the times of joy, failure, struggle, or strife, to share, not with passing, but living into a new norm. A norm not burdened with some temptations of glory, but by being faithful and continuing the old, old story. Let's stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed.
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all the people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they, they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed the time rest. That light and perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come and share in your heavenly kingdom. O God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Charles and Dean, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for Claire and for Tom, who bring their calling, talents, and gifts to share with us in our liturgy today. We give thanks also for the three generations of the Johnson family of this parish, who lead a community of helpful hardware people at our local aid hardware. And in his arms with all the blood of your giving. We give thanks for the life of Joe Taylor, William's brother, who entered into glory this past week. Let Christ's light perpetual shine upon him. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Andrew's Home and Sound in Wilmington, the Reverend Richard Elliott, Rector, and the Reverend Levy Lorback. We pray for those who have commended themselves or have had their themselves committed, commended to us in prayer. For Margaret, Will, Michael, Sally, Deb, Mitzi, Deb, Patty, Darren, Emma, Hayden, Kathy, Norman, Larry, Betty, Lacey Joe, Mary Dell, Alanda, Claudia, Laura, Mary, Brenda, Kim. Heather, Paula, DJ, Alvin, Grace, Lee, Sue, Bernie, Shirley, George, Robin, Charles, Riley, Robbie, Robert, Terrence, Lois, Roy, Pam, Chad, Catherine, Charlie, the family of Joe Taylor, Dee, Tom, Emma, Larry, Cheryl, and for friends not named that held dear by this parish. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We confess that we have sinned against you and followed the word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may obey your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord always with you. And also with you. today. It's uh, gracious of you to put up with us. Um, now, are there, uh, are there any announcements that need to be made? Yeah. Yes? Uh, I want to remind everyone as we're coming to Thanksgiving, we're no longer doing the baskets we once did for ECW. So please fill up the blessing box instead. And do try to put things in it that are easily openable, uh, like the pop tops or uh, pouches of tuna, something like that, rather than a can that's going to require a can opener. Okay, thank you. But where, where's the box? Right, right outside the parish hall door. Thank you, thank you. I'll remember that next time. Um, any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loves you and bring yourselves as offerings and sacrifices to God. For that is your spiritual worship. Thank mm -hmm. you.
We lift them to the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore we praise you. Joining our voices with the angels and our archangels with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name.
us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy histories that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to glad the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God only, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.